when answering exam questions, there are a few key things to remember. Right? So just, just remember exam technique is a key part in preparation for any exams. And it's something that you'll pick up the more you go and you do past papers. Right, so many like questions in exams are repeats of what will be in old exams. So going and looking at lots of generic questions beforehand is a good idea. When going and answering and questions and reading them, there's a few things you just take into account. Make sure you go read the question at least twice so you don't make any mistakes when you're reading them. As you're reading them, go highlight key information. Don't make assumptions about what the question is asking. Uh, make sure after you've answered it, you go check your work for like daft errors that you might make. And if it involves going and answering something where there's some calculation, make sure that you write your workings out of that. Right, let's go and have a look at the question. In this question, we are going to look at chromatography. Right, so chromatography is a technique used to separate different components of a mixture. Right, it's worth recording that mixture or the mixture is dissolved in a fluid called the mobile phase, right, which then carries through a fixed structure holding another material, which is called the stationary phase, right? So the mobile phase is where it's moving, the stationary phase is the parts that aren't. So chromatography can be used to separate mixtures of coloured compounds, which is quite important in this question. So mixtures that are suitable for separation by chromatography includes things like inks, dyes, colouring agents, all sorts. So simple chromatography is carried out on chromatography paper. So a spot of the mixture is placed near the bottom of the piece of chromatography paper and the paper is then placed upright in some sort of suitable solvent, right? so something like water. So the solvent goes and soaks up through the paper and it carries the mixture with it. So the different components of the mixture will move at different rates. Right, so this goes and separates the mixture out. So if we just go and look at the method of how this is done generally. So some of the key things is we're drawing right, a pencil line. Right, we're using pencil because it won't go and be affected by the solvent. About one or two centimetres from the bottom of your chromatography paper. Right, using the pet or capillary tubing, add small spots of each of the ings or each of what you try and separate onto the line on the paper. Place the paper into a container, including some sort of suitable solvent. Then allow the solvent to go and move through the paper, making sure that you remove it before it gets to the top. Right. Allow your chromatogram to go and dry, and then you can measure the distance travelled by each spot and by the solvent, right? Which is really important, and we'll have a look at that in a minute. The other thing that we need to think about is this thing called an RF value, right? So the distance travelled by a given component is defined by the distance travelled by the solvent front, right? So you divide it by the distance travelled by the solvent front. So for a given system known with a known temperature right of a component we can use this to then go and identify the components so we work it out using this thing called an rf value so that is the distance moved by the component divided by the distance moved by your solvent front okay so if we go and look at this question, so a student investigated the colours of three different flowers, so A, B and C. So the colours are soluble in ethanol, but are insoluble in water. Right, this is the method used. So they crushed the flowers, they added ethanol to flower A, they filtered the mixture, they put the spots of coloured filtrate onto the chromatography paper, then the repeated steps one to four with B and C, right? So quite often <coughs> on chromatography pay questions, they will ask you to go and identify mistakes, right? So this question, it asks you to identify a few of those mistakes. So if you look, 
some mistakes. Right, so the start line is drawn in ink. Right, we can't have the start line drawn in ink because ink will be affected by the ethanol and by the the moving solvent. Right. The solvent that they're using is water. Right. They've already said in the question that it's not soluble in water, only in ethanol. Right. So if we go and use water as a solvent, then you're going to get no movement of anything up the up the chromatography paper. So the second part of this question, so another student set up the apparatus correctly. Right? This represents their results. So give two conclusions that you can make from figure two. Right? There are a range of different things, but some of the more important ones is that the flowers have no colours in common because all three of those look quite different. So A and B only contain one colour because they only have one spot. C contains two colours and B, because it's moved the furthest, is the most soluble. Right, and the final part of the question is asking you to go and do something with this equation here for the RF value. So it's asking you to calculate the distance moved by the solvent because it's giving you the RF value and it's giving you the distance the colour moves. So the way that you would do this You'd go rearrange your equation so the distance moved is equal to the component distance divided by the RF. So that would be 3.2 divided by 0 0.15, which means that the solvent front must be 4.9 centimetres. Make sure that when you go in and you're doing that calculation, just go and double check it each time and write down your workings out. So hopefully you have found that useful if you've got any questions then drop it in the comments below and uh, and we'll be uploading a lot more All right good luck folks